So to use custom commands, we have to add something called a text chat command instance under the text chat service. And the text chat service has to use the text chat service version instead of the legacy one. And the text chat command instance has a primary alias that you could set as slash spawn and the secondary alias that you could set as slash s. And these commands need prefixes. So with this command instance, I'm going to do a run test. And right now, if I type in slash and s, you can see that there is a slash spawn command right here. And now let's move to making a custom command system with the text chat command instances. So I'm going to add a folder inside of server script service, name this one command run, and then add a script. This one will be named build. And let's add a module inside of the command run folder. And let's name this one commands. So this command, I'm going to add the command here again. The easiest way, in my opinion, is to have the aliases as the names of these commands instead of the module. So I'm going to add another folder and name this one alias. And here inside of this command, if you want to do a slash spawn, you could just add a module and just name this one spawn with lowercase letters. And then we can add another one and name this one like morph. I will be adding functions to them later. But right now we need to go into the command script. And this script is going to hold all the available commands that we have. So I'm just going to change this variable and we need the alias folder, which is script wait for child and alias. And then we want to do a for loop, placeholder index, alias, in pairs. Then we want to get children from the alias folder. Do. And in here we just want to put these aliases inside of this module. So I can do commands from alias that name is equal to, and then we need to require the modules. So we just do require and alias. And that's for these commands. And now in the build folder, we need to get the text chat service. And also make variables referring to the commands module. And now I can print out the commands and just do a run test. And here we have a table with morph and spawn. And both of them are empty because they don't have anything inside of them yet. But we can change that later. So now we need a prefix variable, which could be like a slash question mark or anything you want the command to run with. Then we need a function that will set up the commands. And in here we want to add a folder inside of the text chat service. And then we want to set up a text chat command instance for every module we have. So we need to do a for loop and we do for alias command in pairs. Since this is the alias and this is going to be the command, we need to create a text chat command instance right here. And then set its primary alias as the prefix. And this is a string and then followed by the alias that's set right here. For example, it's going to be slash from here and then morph or slash and spawn. Then the secondary alias, this can just be the prefix followed by string that sub from the alias string. And it's going to be from the first position. So it's going to be the first letter. So slash s and slash m. Then to parent the instance to the folder under the text chat service. And then we can change the name to the alias. And now this is where we connect a function to the command. So we do text chat command that triggered since this is an event and we do connect function. And this function, as you can see, it gets the original text source. So it's a source and then unfiltered text. And the source, I need to do a playtest. If I go into the text chat service and the and then the text channels, there is the RBX system. If I go to it, this is the source of the message. It has a text source class name. And that source is what sends messages in the chat. So just to showcase everything right now, I'm going to run the setup commands, do a playtest. In text chat service, we have the commands folder and we have morph and spawn. So if I do slash s, it's going to say spawn. And the triggered event, right now we can just print out the source that name. So it's going to print out the player name after we run any command. So like slash s and then slash m. It's right here. But the commands usually have arguments, right? And there is some stuff with the strings that we have to do. We have to get the base of the command, basically. And then we also have to get the arguments. And the base, if I go into the spawn module, I'm going to rename the variable again and have a function followed with the dot notation, not the brackets. And let's give it a part base. So we have to somehow tell the command that we are trying to spawn a part. 
and getting the base variable which is a string and also the arguments because we can run the command on different people or just ourselves let's say so into the arguments which is an empty table since i'm going to make this system where the arguments are going to be optional we basically need to split the chat message of the person saying the command into the slash prefix then the base and the arguments and we can do that by a for loop for index word in string that split and we want to split the unfiltered text by every white space so the first word is going to be this slash command the second one is going to be the person let's say and the third one and more are going to be arguments so to ignore the first index we do if index is more than one then then we check if we have the base so we do if not base then base is equal to the word else if we have the base we just want to do a table insert into the arguments and then every following word so I'm just going to print out the base and the arguments. So I'm just going to say slash spawn and the base is nil because I didn't follow it with anything and the arguments are empty. But if I do slash spawn then part an optional argument so it's going to be whatever the base is a part and here are the arguments so let's continue with the build function now we need to check if the spawn module let's say has the part base so you do local function to run is equal to then we go back for the commands and to refer to this table and this base we just do commands from the base but then we also have to check if base exists then and another check we need to do is is all lowercase so you just follow it by the lower method of a string and just having everything lower cases is not going to cause you problems and having to write 20 different formatting methods so then we basically need to check if we have a function to run so we can do if not function to run then and then return and end and then as if you have the function to run we just run it and here we can give it different arguments one of them is going to be the source and then the arguments table so that's basically everything for the build script if i go to the spawn part this takes the source and the args inside of here i can print out the source and do a playtest so if i say slash spawn it's not going to do anything because it doesn't have the base later on but if i do slash spawn part it's not going to work for some reason wait oh not commands from command or this shouldn't be command this should be command type so now if I do a playtest, again slash spawn nothing slash spawn followed by anything, nothing and then spawn part. And then it printed out the source right here. So that's basically how you do a command system, but I'm going to show you different stuff with the let's say morph and the spawn. But basically both of these things are going to do something with the player. So I'm first going to add a folder. And inside of this folder, I'm going to add a module script that's going to be shared between these commands. So this one will be named shared. And this module, what it's going to do, instead of having every function inside of a command, getting the player from the source, because this is the instance inside of the text chat service, and not a player instance, this module is going to be named fetch, player, and an instance. So right here I'm going to get player service, and then do a local function named fetch player, and I'm going to return the function. And what we can do inside of these functions, we can pass in the source and the arguments, and this will fetch the player basically. Either if we want to do something like slash me, or we just want to do something with a different player. So I said the player source, and then an argument that's going to be the player that we want to do something with is going to be their name or, or a part of their name, so we don't have to basically write the whole username inside of a command. So we first check if there is no player string, or the player string lower, and to set it as string, is equal to like, if we want to do slash me, let's say, then we basically just want to override the player string to be equal to the player source that name. So right now, if you don't give it an argument and and it's going to be a function which uses the player we basically will do something with our character or the person that ran the command so then we do local player to return which is a player and right now it's going to be nothing but then we do local found player is equal to player service and then find fish child from the player string then if you find the player that means if this argument is their name then we set the player to return to be the found player but if someone just has a bad nickname like you know just i i l l i whatever instead of having to write their whole name what we can do is let's say get the first few characters of their name and just match it with the player string instead so you can do for index player instance in parse player service and then we get the players do we want to do a short name 
which is equal to string that sub again from the player instance that name starting from one to the length of the player string so this basically if someone provided the player as the argument as abc and their nickname was abcd and then a bunch of numbers it's going to check if the player instance has abc at the start of their name then we just want to compare if this player string and want to do everything in lower cases is equal to the short name also in lower cases then we set the player to return to be the player instance and then we basically just break and at the end of the function we just want to return the player to return Okay, that was a lot of code without testing, but I hope it runs. And yeah, as a quick side note, guys, if you want to support me, then please leave a like under the video. You can also check out my channel memberships, where you get all of these amazing perks on both my channel and my Discord server, and also access to my first asset pack. But back to the video. So inside of the spawn function, I need to require the module now. Then I do local player is equal to, or I'm gonna name this one fetched player, is equal to fetch player instance. And this is the player source and the arguments. And we basically want this command to be like slash spawn and then the base, which is part, and then the player that we want the part to spawn on. So this would be either me and then different player or whatever. So inside of the spawn function, I'm going to do if fetched player, then I'm just going to print out the fetched player instance. So I'm going to hit play. And now I'm going to say slash spawn and part. And this gave an error because I didn't give the argument and not arguments from one. So that's my bad, but if I do slash spawn and then part, it's going to print out my instance because I was the person that ran the command. Same if I do slash spawn and part me, like so. And if I do slash spawn and then a part of my nickname, so it's gonna be is po, it's still going to print me out. But now let's actually just spawn the part so you can get the player's character is equal to fetch player dot character and then we can do if not character then return end if the player doesn't have the character for some reason and then we want to get the humanoid's root part and again we want to do if not humanoid root part then return end in case the player just fell into the void or something but then we basically just spawn the part we set the part's position as humanoid's position with a vector free offset. Let's spawn it above our character. And then we set the part parent to be workspace. So I'm just going to get the workspace variable, like so. So right now if I just do slash spawn part, it's going to give an error. Oh, it's vector free dot new. But if I do slash spawn part now, it's going to just spawn a part above my character. And right now I'm just going to do a test with two players to showcase you that the command works with multiple people. Okay, so I am the player 1 and this is the player 2. So I'm going to do a slash spawn part and then player 2. And I run the command from player 1 and he spawned the part on player 2. And if I just do slash spawn part and then player or just play, it's going to spawn a part on probably me because I'm index 1. So I'm going to be the first one in the server list. So do slash spawn part play and then it just spawned the part on me. Same if I just do slash spawn p like this. And to show you how we can add different commands, instead of having to mess around with aliases from the command instance, you can just go into the spawn. I'm going to just copy this function, paste it in and name this one brick. So it's going to spawn a brick instead of the part. And the only thing that's going to be different is going to be the material. This one will just be a brick. So now if I just do a play and slash spawn and part, it's going to spawn a part. But if I do slash spawn brick, it's going to spawn a brick instead. Okay, so that's for the spawn, but there is also a morph. And I'm just going to copy this code because I already have everything here. And I will just name this one morph. And also getting the player's character would probably have to be done in a module, like the fetch player instance. So you don't have repeating code over and over again. But for the morph, we basically just do, we basically just delete this. And let's just morph the player into a rig. So go to the rig builder and I just pick the blocky avatar. So I have the rig here and I'm going to put this one inside of the server storage. Get the server storage. And get a reference to the rig. Set rig and then pivot to the humanoid's root parts position. Then we want to remove the previous player character. So I can do fetch player that character is equal to the rig and then this character destroy. And then we set the rig that parent to the workspace. Also, this one should be just morph rig. So I'm just going to showcase the commands now. So slash spawn part and then with the me. 
then spawn brick and then we have the morph so slash morph rig and now I may block your rig character and now let's also change the different player into the rig instead so again I test with two people I'm going to do slash morph into the rig and then the player 2 and now he's a rig and then I'm going to spawn the brick on player 2 and then same if I do slash spawn brick and then put his name with all lowercase letters you can see that it also works and if you don't want every player to basically be able to run these commands there is few things that you can do instead of the triggered event you can also use this fetch player instance module to get the player from the source and then have like a allow list which could just have some ids so you would have the fetched player here and then you would just check if the player is in the allow list so you do local is allowed is equal to and then table that find the allow list from the fetched player that user id and then you check if it's true to this then you do if is allowed then and then you can just move all of this code right here so yeah then if you don't want the player to be able to see these commands if i remove the spawn for example the player won't be able to see it pop up here and i removed it on the client but if i go to the server and then the commands folder the command is actually here so as a fix you can just have a remote that's going to tell the player that hey you should delete these commands off of the textual service because if i just disable it the player is still able to basically see them so that's on a quick note but also another thing that I wanted to show, this is a demo place for the textual service commands. This is an example of basically making the player bigger with a command right here. And the textual command is slash super. And this place is basically available for download from the dev forum post that I will also have linked in the comments. But if you play it and do slash super, you're just going to get bigger and there is going to be a system message saying supersizing me so yeah that's just a fun little demo for the command system but yeah that's basically going to be everything for today so thank you guys for watching and see ya